I just finished editing yesterday's episode. You guys already know why. But I came out to the park because I need to get my first Pokestop, first catch of the day, keep that streak up, which I think I'm actually already a day behind on. I'm not sure. It seems like I play Pokemon Go a lot more than I actually do because that's all you ever see me do on the channel. Well, sometimes you see me eat. A lot of times you see me eat. But some days I really just don't have time to actually play the game. I wanted to come out to the park because I was hoping for increased Jigglypuff spawns since that is the nest Pokemon here. No Jigglypuffs on sightings. At least not yet, that's a bug though. Oh, here they are. First catch of the day. First Pokestop of the day. First like day of the day. First like day of the month, really. Let's see, three day streak. I'm a day behind, right? I think you guys were tweeting me three day streaks yesterday. Pokestop should be the same. Three day streak. It's a lot of items though. My sightings are gone. Am I allowed to spin this? Can I at least do that. Oh, they're back. Jigglypuff, finally, it's on the sightings. And what are that? Two Nidorinos right there. Sorry. Two Nidorans right there. I guess I'll grab those and then keep looking for this Jigglypuff. Maybe it's in the corner. Corners. Nope. Not in this corner. I'm just gonna head back to the gym. It's only level three, so should be pretty easy, especially with that new boost. Here it is. Cool park. Level three. Let's talk a little bit about how I choose the Pokemon to use in a gym. The first thing I look at is type advantage. Nidoking has two types, poison and ground. With those types, it's gonna be weak to psychic, to water, even another ground type. Now, knowing Nidoking's possible moves, I would avoid using a psychic type because it can have two bug type moves, Fury Cutter and Megahorn, and those are gonna be super effective against a psychic type Pokemon. I would probably prefer to use a ground type because that's actually gonna resist Nidoking's poison type moves. So for Nidoking, let's choose, where's my ground? I'll ride on with two ground type moves. For Executor, you guys already know what it's gonna be. Parasect. Executor has double weakness to bug. Parasect is bug and grass, so it's gonna have a double resistance to Executor's grass type moves, either Seed Bomb or Solar Beam. And Lapras, this is the one I get asked about a lot. There's no hard counter to Lapras, you could try Machamp, fighting is super effective against ice. You could try Golem, rock is super effective against ice. But Golem is also going to be weak to Lapras's ice type moves because it's a ground type. You can also try Electric, Raichu. Of course Raichu is not as tanky as the other two Pokemon. And one good pick against a Lapras is going to be Magneton. With two Electric type moves it's going to deal super effective damage and because it's Steel type it's going to resist Ice. Now it's not going to deal as much damage as Raichu, but it's also not going to take as much damage. So lots of choices against Lapras, but none of them are really the one Pokemon that you always want to pick against it. So let's just go. Let's see how it works out. You guys want to watch this? See this Nidoking has Fury Cutter and Megahorn, which I just failed to dodge. But Psychic would have been a bad choice against that. I missed so many dodges on that. 
Maybe it's because I'm trying to hold the camera with one hand. I'm just going to let him go. Take the feint. All right, we'll start with Raichu. Totally missed that dodge, but you saw in that successful dodge, it took less damage than Raichu. And now we're stuck here. I thought we were over this. I'm gonna time out before I actually get to win. Didn't count the Lapras. Alright, well, let's do it again. Sorry, I had to cut the video for that one. Camera battery's about to die. There it is. This is my gym now. I've definitely noticed a lot more turnover. Things are not staying level 10. Well, look, there's level 10, right as I'm saying it. But things are definitely not staying at level 10. Ooh, another instinct gym down there. All right, I'm gonna go down here, drop something in this gym, maybe get a smoothie, and then head back home. Let's do some Q&A. Before we get to q and I just want to show you guys, I actually just hatched a perfect IV Geodude. So I'm pretty excited about that. That'll be my sixth, sixth or seventh perfect IV Pokemon. So I have Snorlax, I have Slowbro, Vaporeon, Rhydon, Golbat, and now this Geodude, which I actually have enough candies to evolve. So I'll be evolving my perfect IV Geodude in Sunday's Q&A. Now, speaking of Q&A, we're going to start one right now. I know this episode wasn't the best. It didn't have a ton of content, but you guys already know what the case was. This is yesterday's episode, still uploading. So I just want to go through and take some of your questions from Twitter. And we'll just answer them. We'll go through as many as we can. Let's get into it. Are the catch rates the same with the standard throw versus a Pokemon Go Plus throw? Yes, throwing with a Pokemon Go Plus is exactly the same as throwing with just a Pokeball straight throw, not a curveball. Pokemon Go Plus does include your medal bonus, so if you have uh, medals for the type of Pokemon that you're trying to catch with Go Plus, that will get added, but that's the only bonus modifier you can get on a Pokemon Go Plus throw. What level do you consider to be the best time to seriously start evolving your Pokemon for gym battles? I would say level 20 at the earliest, and the reason is egg Pokemon hatch according to your trainer level when you pick up the egg. So at level 20, that's the maximum level that egg Pokemon are going to hatch. Once you reach level 20, your eggs are all going to hatch at their maximum potential. So egg Pokemon actually have higher IVs than standard Pokemon that you catch in the wild. And that's because egg Pokemon's IVs are only selected from 10 to 15, meaning the lowest possible IVs you can get on an egg Pokemon is 10, 10, 10, or 66.7%. So egg Pokemon generally have a much better chance of having good IVs. So once you start hatching those at level 20, you get ones with good IVs. Those are the ones that you want to start investing your Stardust and your candies into to evolve and power up for gym battles. And honestly, some of them you don't even need to power up. There are Pokemon that I've hatched from an egg and evolved and I still use them in gym battles to this day. Fully evolved, they might make it to 1200 CP, but that's more than enough to take down a Pokemon 2000 CP and above. First Niantic makes defending gyms easier. Now attacking is made easy again. Which do you prefer of the two? Honestly, I don't see why they had to change both. I think that it should be even. Why can't we have 
a thousand prestige gained for beating a Pokemon in training, and a thousand prestige lost for beating a Pokemon in a battle. If both sides were even, we would both have an even chance of building up a gym and tearing down a gym, and things probably wouldn't be as swingy as they are now. I really don't understand why they couldn't just change one, and they had to go with both. If you delete all Pokeballs from items and use Go Plus, will it use a Great or Ultra Ball if available? No, it will not. It will just flash red to let you know that you don't have any Pokeballs, and it won't throw anything. Are you thinking about upgrading your phone to the Pixel? Yes, I am seriously considering it. This thing just can't keep up anymore. When I'm trying to play the game and record my screen at the same time, it gets really slow, especially in battles. So an upgrade is definitely something I'm considering right now. I also need to upgrade my computer. This is five years old now, so it's not the best computer to edit on. It crashes a lot, actually, when I'm editing, but that's a lot of money. New phone, new computer, it's a lot of money. Why did I just hatch an Eevee from a 10k egg? If you picked up that egg before they announced the changes, before they actually made the changes to the eggs, you can still hatch an Eevee, and that's because it seems Again, there's no confirmation of this, but all the evidence at this point really points to egg Pokemon being determined when you pick up the egg. So if you picked up a 10 kilometer egg before they made the changes, it could have been determined to be an Eevee as soon as you picked it up. So now, even after you've made the changes, that egg was already set and you can still hatch that Eevee from it. How do you think trading will work when it comes out? Will it only work locally or could we trade with people in other countries? I don't think trading should be something that you can do with people in other countries. I don't think you should be able to trade online or internationally, and the reason is it completely ruins the exclusivity factor of region-exclusive Pokémon. They're supposed to be exclusive. You're supposed to have to travel to that location if you want to catch them. And a lot of people actually complain about that, saying that not everyone can afford to travel or not everyone has the time to travel, but this game is not like other games that you've played before. This game has a real-world aspect to it, and if you can't get around the entire real world, well then you can't experience the entire game. As for how I think it should actually work, here's what I think. Niantic adds a trading menu to the game. When you go into the trading menu, you can select the option to offer a trade. You put your Pokémon up, let's say you have a Charizard that you want to trade. You list your Charizard, and then anyone within 100 meters of your location can go into their trading menu and see what people are offering nearby. They'll scroll through that list, they can find your Charizard, if that's something they want, they select it, and they offer you a Pokémon in return. You get that notification on your phone, you can decide whether you want to accept or reject it. If you accept it, the trade goes through, and they have the Charizard, and you have the Rhydon that they offered. Probably not a fair trade, but that's the first thing I thought of. This way you never actually have to meet with people face to face. You can walk into a crowd, a place like Santa Monica Pier where you know people are playing, you can offer up your Pokemon, and anyone who's playing the game there can find it and trade with you without you ever having to go meet them face to face. And I know that's a big concern. There's a lot of safety concerns when it comes to how trading should work, because this is a game where adults are playing and young children are playing. So there's a lot of potential for abuse with a system like trading. Now, with the system that I outlined, you can trade with people that you don't know, but you can also set up trades ahead of time. There will be online forums where you can set up trades. The Silk Road subreddit will definitely be one of those. You can arrange a trade ahead of time with someone, say they have a Charizard that you want, you have a Blastoise that they want. You can set up that trade, agree to meet somewhere, set up the trade on your phone, offer up your Pokemon, they go into their nearby trades, find yours, and you trade. So it works both ways. It allows you to trade with people you've never met before without actually having to meet them face to face, and it also allows you to prearrange trades online or in person and make those happen. So that's it. I'm going to end it there. This is yesterday's video, still uploading. It's now Almost 7 o'clock in the evening. Again, I'm sorry it came up late, but yesterday was a very strange day for me. Now, I know this episode wasn't the most entertaining, but I hope you still learned something from it and enjoyed it nonetheless. See you guys tomorrow.